Hello and welcome to this tech tutorial from CISA2. I'm Frank Devereaux and today's lesson is going to be in honor of Computer Science Education Week. It's December, early December, an hour of code is coming up and I thought I would give you a short tutorial on coding and this coding lesson is going to use CS first now I remember teaching my elementary students how to make a snowflake and coming from Wisconsin we know all about snow in, in early December and this one is a fun little coding activity on our code and it uses uh, code.org and so this is fun but I thought I would use CS first uh, for some more advanced students who want to make their own shape of snowflakes instead of following the tutorials and so I use CS first which uses scratch and a lot of times we use scratch.mit.edu uh, but Google also has their own version of scratch it's a little bit more controlled you can create your own classroom I'm in here as a teacher and if I go to my dashboard I can invite students that has their own uh, units and but this time I'm just going to create my own and when your students log in using your code even the homeschool students can get in here and they can go to the plus and they can go right to new project down here at the bottom and here we have our dashboard and we have our scratch sprite and we can delete that one and add another one it doesn't really matter I can come here and add it choose a sprite and I can come over here to reindeer and pick this it doesn't matter we can make it smaller if we want to make it smaller to help us see better we can go 25 percent and actually we could even just make it disappear it, it, we need the sprite to actually put the code on but we can actually make it disappear there so it's not even hidden because we're just more worried about drawing the snowflake now if you want to see it there it is and we're going to come here and choose a background and we'll go get a starry space kind of background here to draw and we'll get some stars and there we have it and now we can start coding on our reindeer with or like I said you can make it uh, hidden uh, the first thing I like to do is always start off with the main event we want to start our coding with when the green flag is clicked when the game is started we always tell our students you you can put all the codes in there but if the computer doesn't know when to run the codes it's not going to work some people like the space bar some people like when the sprite is clicked i generally go with the green flag now i always like to start off in the middle unless i, I need to start off elsewhere so i always get a go to command and i say go to and then i usually start at zero zero which is in the center of my workspace in the center of my screen you'll see once i do that and i click this you'll see my sprite move back there so that starts off my game or my drawing or my story or whatever i'm trying to code now i do not have a pen if i'm drawing a snowflake or if i'm having my computer draw a snowflake for me i need to get a pen block so i come down here to this add an extension and i come down here and add this pen and then I get these coding blocks here. Now, we can always uh, move around and look through these, but I've used this enough to know what these all are. And I'm just gonna, I like to start off with an erase the screen because I'm gonna be drawing on and off and I might wanna just start off the game with a clear screen. So I put an erase all on there. And I'm gonna bring the pen up to start. And then I always put the pen down to get the drawing going now we can set our pen size uh, i'm gonna i like about a size five so i'm gonna do that and then i can set my pen color and i'm gonna pick a nice like a bright blue color um, and then go here and go here and then there you have it I have a nice blue color so that starts off my game here's my workspace and then we're gonna see how we can draw a snowflake so when I go here I'm just gonna move over here and, and just to show you I'm gonna go and I'm gonna move my sprite we know the pen is down as we start and let's say I'm just gonna say 75 okay and then I'm gonna move 
a negative 25, one third of the way back. So I, I'm kind of drawing a, a branch or a stem of my snowflake. And I'm gonna show, you'll see how it's gonna go. We'll, I'll occasionally show you what happens here. Then I'm gonna turn left 60 degrees. Uh, and you'll see why, that's later. And then I'm going to go back 25 steps, or I'm also gonna move another 25 steps here. And let's just, I'm just gonna click on this block to show you what happens. So we go here, uh, let's start over. There we go, so it went up, 75 came back 25 turned left and made this little branch of my stem here so we have uh, the start of our branch i'm going to move back to the middle and here we go so i'm going to keep on going on this this kind of branch here so i am going to now say i'm going to turn 180 degrees now and that's gonna get me pointing in the other direction. So I'm just gonna change that to 180 degrees. And then I'm gonna move another 25 steps. 25 here. And then I'm gonna turn left 60 degrees again. And then I'm gonna move another 25 steps. And then I, let's see what that looks like. So I'm gonna click on this. And there we have one branch of, or one stem of our snowflake with different branches. Now, I want it to all stem from the center right here. So what I'm going to do is pull the pen up and I'm gonna get it back to the center. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go back to the zero, zero origin. There we go. And then I'm gonna put the pen down after that, after I get back to the middle. And so here's what happens now. And I can click the flag and go back here. And now watch what happens. And it's ready, back in the center, ready to make another one. Now if I click this again, it's gonna make another one and another one and another one. If I do that six times, usually snit, almost all snowflakes are six-sided. So we have the makings of our snowflake. Now here's where you could teach your students how to repeat. I could just get a repeat command and I don't have to click it six times. So we come here and I can wrap this with a repeat and watch and I'll go six times. There we go. Now watch what happens when I click that. And there we go. Oh, I actually put it 60 times. So we want just six. I'm spinning that reindeer was spinning around there. So watch what happens when we do this. And there we have a snowflake, a simple uh, repeat function and pen ups and pen down and moving and talk about degrees and steps and therefore. Now I can also put a start here or I can do that when the space bar is clicked. So I erase everything, get the pen already, and then I just hit the space bar and it draws a snowflake. Now, I am gonna go further on this video for those who want some more advanced. I'm gonna extend my branches out and I'm gonna use some variables and function blocks to define this as a stem and define branches and lengths of our branches. So if you wanna continue further on this video, you can. Otherwise, if you have beginner students, you can just work this with them and create a scratch snowflake with your students. Glad you watched. If you wanna continue watching, continue on from here. Alrighty then, thanks for rejoining me here. We're gonna get into some functions and variables in this portion of the video. It's gonna get a little bit more complex, but it will actually see that it will 
help us make a more complex snowflake without having to do too much work and repeating these over and over again. And we're gonna let the computer codes do the work for us. So the first thing I'm gonna do is name this set of commands and turn it into a function and so that we can name it and use it over again. So I'm gonna go to my blocks and I'm gonna make a block and I'm gonna call it uh, snowflake or basic snowflake. There we go. Now I'm gonna define this set of codes as my basic snowflake. And so now you'll see that when I start this, I can just tell it here, I can use all these codes and just put it this and it'll just do all that on its own. So watch what happens when I click the green flag, it'll go to the middle, it'll erase everything, pen up, pen down, set the pen size, set the pen color, and then go to draw that basic snowflake and it'll look like that and there we go. Kind of what we did before but with a space bar. Now, I'm gonna use variables to kind of change the lengths of these stems here and these branches. So let's try that. Okay, welcome back. We're gonna talk about variables in Scratch. Now variables are components we can set and make our own variables that we can adjust the, the number and length. And we're gonna use variables to extend our branches and make more little stems and branches on our snowflake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna make a variable and I'm gonna call it a stem. Here we go and we're gonna say that. And then I'm also gonna make another one called a branch. So we're going to do that. Then we have these variables here and we don't have to see them. We can turn that off here. Uh, but we now know that we can set our branch here and we're gonna move this down here and we're gonna set our branch and the branch we're gonna call these little ones and we'll call the, we'll set our stem, okay? And instead of typing in the numbers, we can now use our variables and set it in the beginning. So here we can say that we want our stem to be, we said it was originally 75, so we're gonna just pull it at 75 and our branches we set as 25 length. So I'm gonna put those at 25. And then instead of typing in the number, we could have just put these in here like this. And then we could have uh, put the branches in here and in here. And this is gonna be important in a little while. You know, I'm gonna show you how this works. Uh, now we can still, it'll still work, we can still uh, clear our screen and then put this on here and you'll see it still works when I click the green flag and there we still have our snowflake. Now, but what we can do after this is we can now use the, this function to just kind of add on. We can add on a control and we can repeat this three times each time getting a little bit smaller right so we uh, if I just clicked it it would just redraw that three times but we can say in now that we have variables we can control our variables and we can say hey let's let's change the size of those branches and stems so we each time we draw one we can change the size of the stem, change the size of the branch, and let's say we wanna go down, let's say we wanna draw the, the stem a little bit longer, and so let's say we wanna change it by 25, okay? And let's say we wanna make these our branches a little bit smaller, and we wanna say, change them by minus 10, let's say, okay? And let's see now what happens. So it'll draw a basic snowflake, and then it will change those, and then it'll draw it again, and see if that works. 
And you see how it extended our snowflake? It redrew each stem and branch a little bit long, smaller and it reduced it from 75 to uh, now 70, you know, to 50 and th then it went down to, or it increased it to 100 so it drew it a little bit longer then it drew a little bit longer but it made the branches a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller but redoing the same thing so uh, having these variables allows us to add on without having to draw and write all the code over and over again and then your students can do fun things like they can go to the the pen color and they can change the pen color by 10 each time so they could uh, put this here and each time it'll change the pen color and let's see what that looks like there we go and your students can do that and they can change the numbers and they can even use variables they can pick random lengths uh, to put in there between certain numbers and then it'll even change the, the size and shape of the snowflake there in that as well. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this CISA 2 tech tutorial in honor of Hour of Code Week and Computer Science Education Week. A shout out to Youth Code Jam for helping me with the coding of this. Have a great day.